You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over there. You can also shoot me an email, linux at quicksurf.com. And uh, if you want to subscribe, I have subscription links uh, in the show notes for each and every episode. In addition to subscribing directly to the show, you can subscribe via YouTube, uh, stitcher.com. Let's see, what else do I have here? Quite a few ways to subscribe. Uh, Friend feed, uh, YouTube, uh, Daily Motion, blip.tv. There's a variety of uh, places you can find us online. Tune in. Um, all kinds of goodness. Uh, been a little bit on a hiatus uh, for the last uh, couple of months. Uh, had a major life event happen. And uh, so in the interest of uh, privacy of other people that live in this house, that's about all I'm going to say. However, uh, we are back. So let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. From ZDNet, uh, Linux kernel 3.10 is picked for long-term support. All a Linux distribution really needs is any version of the Linux kernel that fits its needs. This is correct. Uh, the author here, Stephen J. Von Nichols, uh, writes that the Linux businesses like Canonical, Red Hat, and SUSE need more than that, though. When they build commercial distributions, they need to know that the base Linux kernel will have long-term support, and that's just what the Linux Foundation fellow and leading Linux kernel developer, Greg Crow Hartman, is giving them. Now, he has announced on his blog that 3.10, the 3.10 Linux kernel is going to be the next long-term support kernel release. Uh, Stephen J. Von Nichols here has a pretty good write-up of why 3.10, and uh, you know I thought it was an interesting read and thought I'd share it with all of you. So, pretty cool. From CIOToday.com, IBM is boosting power to Linux servers for big data and cloud. IBM is pushing hard on its Linux on Power initiative. The company just rolled out a new Power Linux server and a new software and middleware applications that aim to satisfy the growing enterprise appetite for big data, analytics, and next-generation Java applications in an open cloud environment. The new Power Linux 7R4 server is built on the Power Systems platform running IBM's Watson Cognitive Computing Solution. IBM says that the server offers the same performance for the new business critical and data intensive workloads increasingly deployed in Linux environments. They're also pushing out IBM Cognos Business Intelligence and Enterprise DB database software each of which are optimized for Linux on the Power Platform. So pretty cool. If you're an IBM shop and you want to get into Linux, this is definitely not a bad choice. From IT World uh, by Jim Lynch, there's a posting here. What was your first Linux distro? He goes on to say that his first distro that he recalls was SUSE, and he went to the store and bought it. And I'm really dating myself, but I used to work part-time at CompUSA, and we actually sold SUSE in the box. That's right. It was a boxed SUSE Linux that you could buy, and it was sitting on the shelf right next to the Windows installs. Pretty neat. Any, anyway, personally, my first Linux distro that I remember trying, if uh, it was a uh, Red Hat, I think it was version four. Pretty. It, I know it was Red Hat. I don't remember the exact version, but it was quite some time ago. Uh, even before that, though, back when I had a Pentium 160, 166 megahertz Pentium uh, with MMX, um, a friend of a, of a family who lives who used to live in Walnut Creek was staying over, and he brought uh, FreeBSD install disks for FreeBSD 4, and we installed that on my uh, brand spanking new Pentium 166 uh MMX computer, and I ran that uh, FreeBSD for quite some time before um, trying out Linux. And you know, obviously, I 
you know, worked in IT for a living, so I had to do Windows. Uh, so I had, you know, a variety of Windows computers around. But I still to this day, I run FreeBSD on one computer. My, my server, you can't really see it, but right down here underneath the table uh, runs FreeBSD still. And that's my home server. I have a bunch of networking stuff that that runs on that. And that's kind of, you know, the main file server and the whole nine yards. So pretty cool. Uh, but yes, for me, it was Red Hat. And then uh, over time, I switched over to Ubuntu-based, or not Ubuntu, Debian-based uh, distributions, Ubuntu being one of my more favorite ones. I also ran, ran uh, Mandrake for a while back in the day when it was Mandrake. So pretty interesting definitely check the story out and uh you know shoot me an email or you can even shoot him an email and tell him what your first linux distribution that you tried out was from muckware over at muckware.com the linux foundation joins the gnome advisory board linux foundation has joined the gnome advisory board says karen sandler the executive director for the gnome foundation she was speaking at the opening of gnome's annual european conference and uh Quoting her, we are excited to have the Linux Foundation join our advisory board and look forward to working closely with them. Their membership in the advisory board is a recognition of the value that the GNOME project brings to the GNU slash Linux ecosystem, which is something that we hope to enhance even further in the future. So pretty cool. We'll be looking forward to see what comes of that relationship. From uh, techradar.com, five of the best Ubuntu based distros. Now Ubuntu is kind of like a, in many ways turned into a, a distribution of its own. And there are lots of derivatives of Ubuntu uh, from Canonical and a variety of other places. And this is a nice rundown of uh, the best Ubuntu respins. Definitely check it out. If you're looking for a new uh, Debian or Ubuntu based uh, distribution to try out. This is definitely something you will want to look into for sure. Uh, from linuxarea.com, eight of the best Android apps for Linux system administrators. I'm including this because I'm sure there's a lot of Linux system administrators that also run Android on their smartphone. I'm unfortunately not one of those. I'm not really a Linux system administrator, even though I do embedded Linux development for a living uh, right now. That's my uh, current job. Um, however, this list I thought was pretty neat. Uh, number one on the list was ConnectBot. Number two is a Sysbol, a sysadmin excuses. Number three, server up. Number four, Cura. Number five, and FTP. Number six, Pingdom. Number seven, Hacker's Keyboard. Number eight, Weiss Pocket Cloud. The story gives a pretty good rundown of each of those uh, Android apps for uh, Linux system administrators. So definitely give it a uh, check if you are looking for something new to try out. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody on the internets, and we'll see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Please subscribe. Bye.